Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in with me this week. I am Winston Davenport, and for more of my videos, please visit winstondavenport.com. There's also some awesome anointed prophetic worship music on there. There are soaking sessions uh, for you to listen to or download. There's free songs every week for you to download. And I also do a written teaching blog every week, uh, and you can sign up to receive that in your email or you can just log on to the website every week to read that. There's a bunch of good information, uh, a lot of great media on there, and it's all available to you, winstondavenport.com. And I just want to thank everybody for all your support. I've gotten a, an amazing amount of views on YouTube, and that number seems to be growing every day. And more importantly, my website has just uh, exploded with visitors, and I just want to thank you all. I am. This is a, a great... Uh, encouragement to me because I know that God has given me a message of uh, the kingdom and a revelation of our identity in Christ. And I finally got to the place where I, I feel that he has given me the courage to speak that message boldly and not be concerned with the naysayers, not be concerned with the critics. And, and so a lot of what I teach has been controversial and sort of in your face. Uh, and I've definitely have received a lot of flack for certain things that I said, but at the same time, viewership is growing and people seem to be uh, very into the subject of the kingdom of God. A lot of great discussions have been sparked as a result of it, and ultimately, that is what God has called me to do is set Christians free. And sometimes freedom is a process, you know, but, uh, but I want to encourage you to keep growing, keep asking questions, and keep asking the Father for more and more revelation on this subject, because when you grasp a revelation of the kingdom, kingdom of heaven it is going to change your life, change the lives of your loved ones, and change the world around you. Last week, we began kind of a, an epic discussion in regards to uh, the beginning of the world and how Satan fell from heaven like lightning, and I believe his kingdom became established on earth, he and the angels he had taken with him from heaven. And God's method of showing Satan a better way, basically to prove that God is love and that love is always triumphs, love conquers all, is that God made man in his image and likeness, and then he planted the Garden of Eden, which was a type of heaven, on the soil of earth, and placed Adam into this Garden of Eden and told him, spread the borders of this garden until the entire earth is covered and light overcomes darkness. Darkness does not exist. It is simply absence of light. And so, Adam, you are light. You are love. You have the very nature and character of me, your father. Take this, the kingdom of God, the Garden of Eden, and spread it until the devil's kingdom has been swallowed up in the light of sheer love. As we know, Satan came and actually used a great strategy to convince Adam to give up God's great commission to him, which was to convince Adam that he uh, didn't have something that he actually did have. Satan convinced Adam into ignorance of what was rightfully his, of his actual nature, by saying, Adam, you're not like God. God is actually keeping something from you, but if you eat this fruit, then you, your eyes will be open and you'll become like God. And yet God specifically said that I created you in my own image to be exactly like me. So, Adam had to come into, he had to buy into this lie that, oh my gosh, I'm not like God, and so, but if I eat this fruit, then I will be like God. Unfortunately, Adam was already like God, and all eating the fruit did was it sabotaged Adam's peaceful and righteous relationship with God by convincing him and all mankind ever since then that in order to relate to God, we have to become righteous through our works, by doing good things and by not doing bad things. This lie, this checks and balances method of relating to God has held uh, the Israelites in bondage for thousands of years, and now it has also held the church in bondage for thousands of years. And friends, I'm coming with this message of the kingdom of heaven to let you know that the kingdom of God is righteousness. That means that the kingdom of God means that we relate to God because of relationship, because of our standing as his children, having nothing to do with our works. Paul said in, in Romans 14, the kingdom of heaven has nothing to do with what you eat or drink. It has nothing to do with your works, what you do or, or what you do not do, but the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Well, where Adam failed, the book of Romans says that Jesus succeeded. In fact, Paul calls Jesus the last Adam, meaning where Adam failed, 
to accomplish what God had called him to do, Jesus, the second Adam, or the last Adam, did accomplish what Adam failed to do. And so I find it interesting that God's original plan for man was, hello, I created man in my image, and I'm calling you to go spread the kingdom all throughout this world, all throughout the four corners of this earth, until until it is done, until it is finished. Well, man did not do that, and man wandered around and messed around with the Mosaic law for all these years, and and it just was a big mess. And so Jesus is God, and God came to earth in the form of a man named Jesus, and Jesus, the Son of God, said, I am my Father, I have the very character and nature of God, just like Adam did, and I am calling you to take this kingdom and spread it throughout the four corners of the earth. Jesus died and was resurrected, and as he's ascending to heaven, he tells the disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all the earth, teaching them to do the things that I showed you to do. He said, go demonstrate power, bring heaven to earth. And he specifically said what some of that is. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Jesus directly equated signs and wonders and miraculous power to the spreading of the kingdom of heaven because there is no sickness, there is no poverty, there is no sadness, there's no evil, there's no sin, there's no depression, there's no broken relationships in heaven. And Jesus brought heaven to earth and said, now take this heaven, this garden of Eden that I have replanted and spread it throughout the corners of the earth. And in doing so, I will come back. However, once again, man, just like Adam, who has continually related to God based on a checks and balances system of qualifying for blessings or falling short of the glory because of sin, all this stuff, mankind has stayed distracted all these years and has truly failed to spread this kingdom throughout the world. And I can tell you something. Jesus is sitting down at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says he's waiting for his enemies to be made a footstool. His enemies, of course, is Satan and his angels, the original team, the original crew who absconded from heaven, came to earth and set up camp here on earth. God is still waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool. Adam was his original plan. Spread the Garden of Eden throughout the earth. Adam failed. So Jesus came and said, listen, I am resurrecting this call for mankind to take the Garden of Eden, take the kingdom of heaven, and spread it throughout the earth. And yet for 2,000 years, we've kind of been dilly-dallying around. We've been ignorant of our inheritance, ignorant of our identity, and we have failed to do this great commission. But hallelujah, God has called me and has called others and is raising up a generation of people who go, oh my gosh, the kingdom of heaven is here and it is our job, it is our joy to take this kingdom and spread it into the world around us. Well, friends, how can we do that if we ourselves are not living in a revelation of the kingdom of heaven? God called us to be ambassadors of heaven, says Paul. Interesting point about ambassadors. Ambassadors actually reside in the country that they are not from. They reside on foreign soil, and yet they live in what's called an embassy. And that embassy is on land and is a building or series of buildings that represents the country that they are from, not the country in which they reside. So if I am an ambassador to, um, let me pick a place. If I'm an ambassador to Italy, and I live in the embassy on Italian soil, I am actually not subject to Italian law or Italian government. I actually live in a little slice of the United States of America, even though I'm on Italian soil. This is an interesting point because Paul says that we are ambassadors of heaven. We may be living on earthly soil in a sense, but we are living in a slice of heaven. We should not be living according to the laws and the government of this world, but according to the laws and government of heaven, because we live on earthly soil, but we live under the jurisdiction of heaven, and we are ambassadors. We are not subject to earthly laws. We are not subject to earthly principles. We are only subject to the principles of our motherland, of the country from which we come, which As an earthly ambassador, that would be the United States of America, but as a heavenly ambassador, that is heaven. That means that the soil where I live, my embassy as an ambassador, should not reflect and is not subject to anything this world has to offer, but is only subject to heaven. So it's the same thing for you. If you see anything in your life that doesn't seem like it would exist in heaven, you are not living according to how you should be living. You are not grasping the kingdom of heaven. Let me ask you something. Are people sick in heaven? Is God sick in heaven? Is Jesus, who is sitting at the right hand of God God, in the throne room, is he sick? No. 
If sickness does not exist in heaven, which is where you're from, it's your home country, then as an ambassador living in an embassy on foreign soil, you should not ever experience sickness in your life. That might be too much for you to grasp, and if so, you'll get it one day or you'll give up and just never take hold of what's rightfully yours. And a lot of people already getting upset with me and criticizing me for preaching something like that, get over it. If you want to be sick, by all means, be sick. Don't let me stop you. I have not been sick in years. I'm serious. I have not been sick in years. There have been times when I feel sickness coming on, but like within hours, it's gone because it cannot exist because I'm an ambassador. I'm living in an embassy and sickness cannot exist here because sickness does not exist in heaven. That is good news and it can be just as good news for you if you will embrace that principle, which Jesus said and Paul's the one who said it. But man, people are so afraid and these Pharisees that are law-based and fear-based and tradition-based are so afraid of the new movement of God on this earth that they're desperate to cling to sickness. I mean, how stupid can you get and still breathe? How desperate do you have to be to embrace something like sickness or poverty just because it's what you've always known and you're afraid of something new and so you're going to reject what God has given you out of fear? Stop wasting the time of the church. Get out of here. If you feel that God's letting you be sick or a sickness is a part of this earth, by all means, please become terminally ill and die and get out of the way for the rest of us who are actually willing to have the faith and the courage to take hold of what God said is true and manifest the kingdom on this earth. Whew, praise God. I love you guys. Okay, now I want to talk about uh, uh, some of the things that Jesus said in regards to this kingdom of heaven. Just as Adam failed to move forward with this great commission, Jesus has recommissioned us with the same exact strategy. Take the kingdom of heaven, take the good news of the gospel, take the kingdom and spread it throughout the entire world. Here's what Jesus said. In Luke 22, 29, Jesus said, Just as my Father has given and appointed the kingdom to me, so have I given and appointed the kingdom to you, so that you may eat and drink at my table and sit on the throne exercising judgment. I like the use of the past tense verbs in Jesus' statement here. The Father has given me the kingdom of heaven, said Jesus, and just as the Father has given me the kingdom of heaven, says Jesus, so I am giving you the kingdom of heaven. How many of you believe that God gave the kingdom of heaven to Jesus? How many of you believe that God made Jesus the king over his kingdom? Hopefully every single one of you are raising your hands. Now, how many of you believe that this verse goes on to say that in the exact same way, just as God gave me, Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, so am I giving you the kingdom? That means that Jesus is saying just as much to the same extent as God has made me a king over the kingdom, I am also making you kings and queens of the same kingdom. And then Jesus goes on to say why. Here's why Jesus wants to make us kings and queens over the kingdom. Because... He wants us to eat and drink at his table and sit on the throne exercising judgment. Jesus wants us to feast at his table. He wants us to sit on his throne and exercise judgment. That is mind-blowing. That is beautiful. I am so humbled. I am so honored that my Jesus, the firstborn among many brethren, my older brother, my friend, is called me, given me his kingdom, and called me to rule and reign as a king, to eat at his table, to feast of his abundance, and to sit on his throne. Friends, if you are in Christ, you are called to eat and feast from the table of Christ, and you are called to exercise your authority sitting on his throne. That is an overwhelming thought, and yet that is life in the kingdom of heaven. That is what these last uh, video installments, these last seven and now eight video installments have been leading up to. You are a king in this kingdom. It is your right, it is your dominion to exercise authority as the light of the world, as the exemplification, the nature, the image and likeness, the light of God. God is love and you are love because you are like God. It is your destiny, it is your birthright, it is your calling and commandment to take this kingdom and spread it throughout the world. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Keys here refers to the access and the operation. Jesus handed over the keys to the kingdom of heaven to us. Now, if I have keys and I give you my keys, do I have my keys any longer? No. 
you now have my keys. Jesus does not have the keys to the kingdom of heaven any longer because he has given the keys to us. And I would go so far as to say that that key, in a sense, is the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave his Holy Spirit to all who would believe the keys of the kingdom of heaven and says, and said, just as God has given me the keys, the access and operation of the kingdom of heaven, now I pass it along to you. I give you every believer, everyone who calls themselves mine, everyone who is in Christ, I give you the keys of the kingdom. You now are the one who manage the access and operation of this kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be what is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be what is loosed in heaven. Whatever you see in heaven, I'm giving you the access and the authority and the operation to create it on this world. It's the great commission all over again. It's what God said. Adam, here's the blueprint, the garden of Eden all around you. Take it and spread it throughout the world. Jesus has said, Winston Davenport, you viewer at home, I have shown you now the kingdom of heaven. I've given you the keys and I'm calling you to take that kingdom and spread it throughout the whole world. Wow, that is so powerful. I just could sit here and meditate on that revelation and just let that, that righteousness, that peace and that joy just consume me because I've never heard anything more dramatic, more intense, more epic than that. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you have called us as your children. You've given us the keys of the kingdom. You've given us the kingdom of heaven and you have called us to spread and make manifest the atmosphere of heaven here on earth until darkness is far gone and the light has overcome it. Thank you that you have given us that honor. Thank you that you have called us sons. Thank you that you no longer have called us servants, but you call us friends. Man, that is awesome. Finally, Jesus goes on to say in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, it was your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It was your father's good pleasure pleasure to give you the kingdom. This was not a last resort. This is not something that God had to finally be convinced into doing. It was not painstaking for him to do this. It brought him pleasure to give me keys to the kingdom. It brought him pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom because we are his plan for the earth. We are Jesus Christ on this earth today. And God has called us to spread the kingdom of heaven as far as the eye can see. It is righteousness. It is knowing that nothing is separating you from the Father. Nothing has ever come between you before and nothing could ever come between you again. It is peace. It is a state of existence, of consistency from the inside out. And it is joy. It is excitement. It is the em emotive expression of heaven is joy and that is where we are called to live friends it has been such an honor to come to you over the internet for these last eight weeks and talk about this amazing subject i am telling you from experience that a revelation of the kingdom of heaven will light up your life it will change the world around you when you know when you know and, am conv and are convinced that the kingdom of heaven is here and that it was within you and that it was your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom when you walk in that revelation things will begin to change. You will rise up in a new level of confidence and authority. I don't care what storm has been facing you for all these years. I don't care what the doctor has said. I don't care what your accountant has said. I don't care what your relationship is like with your children or with your spouse. I don't care what seems to be falling apart in your life these days. I'm here to tell you that heaven is total well-being. And not only has God placed that total well-being inside of us, but he's called us to manifest that total well-being, that kingdom of heaven in the world around us. That is our calling. It is beautiful. It is excellent. And I just pray right now that you would receive it. If you are struggling with this concept, Father, I ask that you would open their eyes to see this amazing truth. Father, I ask that you would fill them with the light of your love, that you would give a revelation of how much you love them so that they would see how this was your good pleasure, that this strategy is your amazing, awesome, and ultimate goal for this earth, and you have placed us as kings in this kingdom, and it was your good pleasure to give us that kingdom. Thank you, Father, that you would soften hearts that are having a difficult time grasping this, Father. I just ask right now that you would take even the hardest, the most judgmental Pharisees and that you would turn them around, that like uh, Saul of Tarsus, you would knock them off their high horse, even if it means they'd be blinded for a few days to what they've believed, but that you would replace that with the light of truth. Father, you are awesome and amazing in what you are doing through us. 
is astounding and we embrace your move we say yes 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 to you we leave our traditions our old ways of thinking behind we repent we change our minds to come into agreement with you right now friends thank you so much for tuning in next week i will have a q and a on the subject of the kingdom of god and what i have taught for these last eight weeks this is going to be really exciting i have already received some excellent comments some great and challenging questions and also some uh uh, riveting criticisms and, and disagreements, and I will find the most relevant of those, and I will address them next week, and then we will move on to our next subject, where I will be talking about sin. God bless you guys. Uh, go to www.winstondavenport.com for more of these videos, for written teachings, for free music, uh, to see my albums, to stream my albums, or to purchase them. There's a lot of media, a lot of great resources. I encourage you to get involved. Subscribe to me on YouTube. God bless you guys. See you next week.